because you know who else is here besides your friend Tony Barnard? Our friend Greg McElroy is here. How are you, my man? What's happening, man? It's good to see you. Good. It's always good to talk ball with you. I think it's appropriate that Mr. College Football is sitting here in the College Football Hall of Fame. Well, bless your heart. I, pr- I appreciate that. Big picture, Greg, on, on this game. We know about the different storylines, but as you sit here and break down these two teams, let's, let's start with the underdog. Is there a path for Oklahoma? And if there is a path, what is it? Turnovers. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the ultimate neutralizer and a big place. I know it sounds like coach speak, but those two things determine wins and losses more than anything else in college football because it's such a momentum game. And when you look at the momentum that can be seized with a turnover or a big play or a counterpoint, now what it can be created with a turnover or a big play, it's massive. And I look at just tail of the tape, starting 22 mm. for both Oklahoma and LSU, and on paper, it shouldn't be close. It really shouldn't. Right. Now, granted, the ultimate neutralizer are mistakes. And if they make mistakes, the LSU Tigers, that is, and Oklahoma is able to run the ball consistently with Jalen Hurts, then that's their path to keeping this game competitive into the fourth quarter. So Jalen Hurts, the, 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 the narrative of this game goes, A, he's got to protect the football. He's had some issues protecting he the really football has. this yeah. year. So that's, that's number one. But number two, he's got to keep the chains moving with his leg or with his arm But you've got to cut back on Joe Burrow's possessions if you're going to have a chance to win this game. I think that's a really interesting point because I've been thinking about that a little bit. When was the last time Oklahoma's offense was tasked with, hey, we got to squat on it, we got to hold the football, we got to keep the opposing offense off the field? Because usually it's the other way around. It's, hey, we got to keep the ball, we got to control the clock because we don't want the Oklahoma offense on the field, that's not the case in this particular game. Because if you look at the matchups that Oklahoma is going to have offensively, yes, they'll have some advantageous opportunities. And I think they'll have some opportunities to run the football. But Joe Burrow and company with that incredible skill set at wide receiver, curious about the impact of Clyde edwards Elaire right. possibly not being at 100%. I don't expect him to be. I expect his role to be very limited. And if anything, maybe be a decoy in the game, which is not necessarily the worst role that you can have knowing that he's nursing a hamstring injury. But that matchup between LSU's offense and Oklahoma's defense is a very one-sided matchup. Uh, There's not a lot of matchups that I can see on the Oklahoma side against this LSU group that I feel like are advantageous. Greg, as a quarterback, you watched Jalen Hurts play three years at Alabama. You saw him have incredible highs. Mm almost won the national championship as a freshman SEC player of the year, loses his job in 2017 in this building right. down the road here, comes back, wins the SEC championship off the bench for Alabama at the same building down the road. When he goes to Oklahoma, what what were your thoughts about how Lincoln Riley was going to use his skill set? He's not like the other guys. Right. He's different. What did you think he was going to do, and what what has Lincoln Riley actually done with well, him? I, I think one thing that's been encouraging is how he hasn't completely deviated away from who Jalen Hurts really is. Jalen Hurts is an excellent runner. He's a power runner, more specifically. And he is not going to be a super twitchy, you know, like Kyler Murray. He's not going to be a super twitchy, create behind the line of scrimmage and throw the ball with remarkable accuracy down the field. He He's improved in those areas, but that's not his bread and butter. Right. His bread and butter is quarterback designed runs between the tackles and in scramble drill opportunities. He's not always going to look and keep his eyes downfield trying to deli- distribute the football. He's looking to create lanes so he can gash the, the, uh, the defense north and south. So I think Lincoln Riley's done a great job of subtly adapting adapting to what Jalen Hurts is most comfortable doing. He did the same thing for Kyler Murray because Kyler Murray's skill set was different from that of Baker Mayfield. So I think they've reverted back a little bit more to Baker Mayfield except not as much genuine drop back. It's more off scramble, it's more off movement, Mm. it's more off things that allow Jalen Hurts to use his athleticism more than kind of operating as a drop back passer. You play quarterback in this league. You won a national championship in the in the Southeastern Conference. Can you put into context what LSU has done with Joe Burrow? Because we saw Joe Burrow play a year ago. Right. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. okay. But then you put him in an offense that takes advantage of his skill sets. And if Greg, if he gets 285 yards right. tomorrow, he'll have 5,000. Yeah, it's no amazing. player, no player in the history of this conference has thrown for 5,000 yards. 
I'll, I'll be the first one to tell you. We we had them week nine last year. I think if you were to ask Ed Ogeron, too, he'd tell you, uh, yeah, Joe is is good player, solid player. Mm -hmm. We had him week nine. I, I watched his first eight games because I was interested in him, and I obviously cover the league closely and, and love watching quarterbacks, and I thought he was very average. I mean, throughout the course of, of the first eight games last year, but something went down in the seven-overtime game against Texas a and It was as if he realized, hey, I got to do more. I can do more. I'm going to do more. Mm -hmm. And then you saw that kind of trickle into the bowl game. So he used that entire bowl season to really work on taking a little more ownership. And he played very well against UCF. And then, of course, the transition to this offense, it further proves that to get recruited at this level, you have to have really good skill. There's no denying that. Everyone that starts in Division One football can throw it. Everyone that starts in the Southeastern Conference can throw it. But there are certain things that come to the forefront when the big lights get bright. And the thing that I'll say, and even doing Joe Burrow games this year, when you watch him in practice, it's like, all right. Okay. Yeah. yeah, he's, yeah. he's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you watch him in a game, that's the best player in America. Why is that? And there's some intangible quality that some guys just have. And they just seem to get bigger and better and play better with more consistency the bigger the moment becomes. And that's been him. I think he's refined his craft quite a bit in the way he moves in the pocket, how he always keeps his feet underneath him, and he's always keeping his eyes downfield regardless of the traffic that's going on. As he's getting ready to get hit, he's still accurate with the football and being able to deliver to the open receiver. So uh, I've been so impressed with how he's grown, uh, and I've been so impressed with the confidence he's displayed throughout the course of the first 13 games. Well, I wanted to ask you about a specific play, the game against Texas in Austin. I'm, I'm sitting there watching that game. It's a third and long. Yeah. they got to have a big play. Right. He drops back, and he doesn't scramble. He just takes a, a slight little shift to find a, just find a <laughs> gap. And then he, and when he made that shift, the guy wasn't open. When yeah. he made the shift, just a couple of feet, Completely. he threw it, and it's a touchdown. Well, and I, it's, it's all about You can't time. teach that. It's all, you can't teach it. And, and it's, a, it's about timing, and it's all about – creating just a little bit more time in a throwing position to allow your receivers to uncover. And I thought that was a great example, but there were other throws in that game that led you to start to think, okay, th this guy's something. I mean, because even the first game, okay, they played, but oh, wow, you know, that was nice performance against a solid group of five program, all good. Texas, you know, we even thought to ourselves, you know, Texas, maybe not great on defense, a lot of young players, let's see how they handle it. But it was really the game against Alabama where I was most impressed mm -hmm. because it was the timely running and the, t the ability to just extend drives a little bit more on third down when there's good coverage. He's able to make a guy miss and create another first down to keep the defense on the field on a third and long. On third and 10, there's the pressure overloaded on the right side. Dump it off, no problem, Clyde edwards Lair, Go make a play for me, Clyde. He makes a guy miss, first and 10. He did the little thing so expensive exceptionally well in the most critical moments. And I, I became immediately a believer in what his capabilities were because he had shown signs, he'd shown accuracy, he'd done remarkable things up to that point, had played well against Auburn, even though that was probably his least impressive game, but it was against the best defense. Right. And he's only gotten better throughout the course of the season. So yes, the Texas game showed us it was possible, but that was just the beginning to where he's at now and where he eventually got to in playing against the likes of Georgia and some of the other great teams they played in November. Well, you brought up Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. One of the things I wondered about, you mentioned the drive to put the game away against Alabama. Hilaire is his check down guy on these longer developing routes. And I, I guess other guys can play that role, but Hilaire is so good at it, yeah. of being right where he's supposed to be for the check down. Well, I think we, we talk so much about why they went to this offense, and it's, it's very quarterback friendly. You pick a matchup, they have great receivers, you, you have a really good tight end that can stretch the field vertically and be physical in the run game. But this shift to this style of offense was as much about Clyde edwards Lair as it was about Joe Burrow. Mm -hmm. Joe Burrow could identify the matchups and process things quickly, which allowed him to really take this offense from a really efficient offense to the best offense in America. But Clyde edwards Lair ability to play both between the tackles as a runner, on the perimeter as a runner, and on the perimeter as a pass catcher and a route runner, he might be their best slot receiver. And that's no, that's no disrespect to no. Jefferson, that's but no he doubt. is – who do you cover him with? Perfect. You put him in the game. you got 11 personnel. All right, we'll play nickel. 
All right, that means he's getting a linebacker. Good luck. All right. It's just he, he's a matchup nightmare, and, and they have two or three guys that are similar to that. So his ability potentially to not be a factor in this one is something that you need to be a little bit cognizant of if you're an LSU fan. All right, love talking ball. We're great. <laughs> Macro, they tell us we got to go, so we got to go. Okay. <laughs> right, Thank you, my friends. Good it, to man. see you with you. Sounds good. All right. Great to see you.